and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are, the, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. There, buddy. That's right. Today we're going to talk about diastasis, recti, what is it, how to fix it. This is science-based. We're not just shoot from the hip here, Brad. That, we're, we're knowing what we're talking about, That's right. right. <laughs> By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe there to us. Go. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, you're going <laughs> to definitely want to go to our <laughs> website, Bob and Brad, this week. Go to the giveaway section because we are giving away a oh. sleep evasion mattress they, along with a couple pillows. It's a major bonus, Bob. This, they're nice mattresses. We love ours. Yep. I was off mine for a while because we were, I was in isolation. I missed it. Oh, I believe uh, you it. You can also go to Facebook.com and go to Bob and Brad, and I'll be the contest will be pinned to the top of the page, our page. Short version of us. Go to Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. Say no more, Bob. All right. I won't. Brad, start up. <laughs> Diastasis recti abdominis. This is something I'm going to refer to it as DRA, uh, so I don't have to spit that big word, you know, that yeah, right. string you don't of words out. It, right. But we have a, a number of people over the years say we need to get some information on this, and we haven't been ignoring you. We kind of have, but anyways, here it is. We've got the video. Well, somewhat. I, I suppose we didn't really feel qualified, being that we've never had a baby <laughs> and we've never been pregnant. Right. So, so let's let's do the you know what is it. What is it, Bob? It's a vertical separation of your abdominal muscles right where I have this yellow tape, okay? Uh, it can happen to males or females. Oh, it can? Yes. Oh, yeah. I actually had a patient. He was, he was in his 70s, and he had it. And every time he would laugh or tighten his belly muscles, boy, it, it popped right out. Right in this area. It, why, why did he get it? Do you know? I don't remember, oh, Bob. Yeah. It was a long time. I, but I clearly remember this. Sure. He wasn't in for that treatment. Sure. He didn't care. It didn't bother him, and he lived with it. Okay. But uh, oftentimes, most commonly, uh, women have it with the birthing process. Sure. Uh, it separates, and then obviously, it's not attractive. Visually displeasing. Right. Exactly. Right. Plus, it, it you know it can cause problems if because the, the internal right. you know organs intestines and organs soft tissue hit. comes out and you get pinched and there's sure. issues. Uh, so we want to correct it if possible. Uh, you can wear a corset. Or sure. a brace. We're not going to talk Type about of girl? that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, we're not going to talk about that, but that that option is there. We're talking about physical therapy exercises. So um, what I wanted to find out was how successful is this in the studies? So I did a little research, and I went to the uh, Journal of uh, Women's Health and Physical Therapy. Very good. 2012, 2012, volume 36, and there was a study done there. There was 296 uh, female subjects after they had uh, given birth, and they had DRA. Uh, they did four to six weeks of exercises, gotcha. and the primary exercise was to tighten up and strengthen the transverse abdominus muscles. Gotcha. That's the muscle where the fibers go this way. Right. And we're going to show you... Like a belt almost. Right, yeah. exactly. Like that corset belt that yeah. you could just put on and use that as opposed to it. After four to six weeks, uh, the results were of success amongst all the subjects uh, from 41% success. I'm not sure. I didn't look into the details how they came up with the exact sure. numbers. 41% successful was a low number, and some of them had 100% success. In other words, things totally can... So know. everybody had success, right? but s some of people only had like 40%, which is still pretty good, right? and others had 100% success, which is great, obviously. Yeah, wonderful. So, so uh, you know, it's, this is not a guarantee. Other words, in other words, it worked. Right. It, it, and, you know, I like it when they do these uh, studies with a lot of subjects. Right. So yeah, you get that. 96, right. So, so three things, though, that uh, you need to follow these three rules. Number one, you need to have the okay from your, your doctor. Right. Okay. Make sure that everything is uh, going to be okay. Uh, number two, with these exercises I'm going to show, there should be no pain. 
Um, maybe some muscles. Your muscles might get sore, yeah, uh, soreness muscle soreness, but you should have no pain while you're doing it or as a result of it. After you get done and all of a sudden you start feeling some unusual pain, uh, then you cannot continue. You need to see or go back to your doctor and find out what's going on. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, when you do the exercise, here I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got my yellow protrusion area here. You need to be aware, and if anything protrudes out, you get the little bulge there, you cannot continue the exercise. You have to maintain the integrity of your abdominal muscles, keeping everything in where it belongs. So that's the key. Right. That's so you're key. training Even those muscles. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot, it's, it's a lot of biofeedback, a lot of visual feedback you can use. You can touch, you can take a, well, I'll be laying on my back for these exercises. You might have to use a mirror so you can see sure. it, uh, but you can lift your head up. So shall we continue, I Bob? like the idea too, like you said, uh, to actually some tactile right. feedback. Or palpate. Palpate, In right. other words, just feel it. Right, there you go. So, all right. You want a pillow, Brad? No, no Bob, that's all right. I, all right. Uh, I appreciate your offering. So we're going to start in a supine position. You can do this on your bed. Probably a firm surface would be best. Supine position means he's laying on his lying in, on his back. There you go, Bob. Hook line, actually. So we're going to yeah. bring your, your feet up like this. This is the hook line position. Okay. Now, to get the transverse abdominus muscles to fire, what we're going to do are contract. Uh, you're going to think about doing a posterior pelvic tilt. So I'm going to do this. If you put your hands under your lumbar spine and you think about squishing your fingers, that will give you that posterior pelvic tilt. So you get that to push down. You're lessening the arch in your back. You're right. making it less yep. prominent. And then you're think about your belly button going down in towards your spine, that lumbar spine, and then suck things in so that it goes up into your rib cage. Your stomach goes up into your rib cage. And while you're doing all that, you need to be aware of what's happening with your DRA. Is it staying in where it belongs? If it is, that's wonderful. You'll do that and hold, and then you're going to relax. That's one contraction. And you're going to do it again, taking your time. This How is, long do you hold it, Brad? You can just hold it one to three seconds. Okay, so not very long. Yep. The whole idea is training those muscles. Tilt, bring it in, suck it in, and squeeze and relax. You know, monitor your fingers. If you had a mirror, you know, if I had a mirror right here, you could use that or, or simply... Look up. That's a little uncomfortable on the neck muscles after a while. I would think, though, just using your fingers would would give right. you feedback. Yeah. Right. I, I, th I think we're going to have a personal preference there. Sure. All right. Now, you do 10 of those, okay? Now, after you do those for a few days, you can do them daily. You can do them more than once a day. But when you feel comfortable getting the muscles to contract the way you want them to, you can feel the muscles, too, as well as the uh, the DRA uh, protrusion, um, or the lack of it, hopefully. Uh, then all that is done. Then we're going to go to the next phase. Gotcha. Okay? So we're going to do the same thing, posterior pelvic tilt, in with the belly button, and up into the rib cage. And then we're going to take the right leg, the left leg stays in this position, and we're going to go up and do a straight leg raise. It's about 45 degrees. It, it, you know, you don't have to measure it, but about to here, and then you're going to go down. And while you're maintaining it, so we're taking a static exercise and adding some movement. So it starts to relate to uh, real life scenarios. And then you just go up and down while maintaining that core posture with the proper and closure. If you're not able to do it, you're probably not ready for this one yet, right? Right. I mean, if exactly. You, if, if it causes the protrusion, right. or if you're just not able to do it, exactly. Then, and you can do both legs. Yeah. Obviously, you want to. If this is too hard, but it, you can just go out to here and maintain uh, the closure, then just start and do that. Okay, ten times on each leg, and then the forty-five degrees. Okay. And then, you know, you're going to work on that for a few days until you can consistently hold it in. Now, it's going to be very difficult, particularly initially after you've had, obviously, Bob and I 
can't right. relate to having babies, right. but we've had wives who've had babies, and that's right. <laughs> we've got feedback that way. Yeah. So those muscles are going to take a while to tighten up. So that, you know, that's why on the study it was four to six weeks that these exercises. Patience, patience, patience. You may have to work on the first exercise for quite a while. Exactly. Before you go to the second one. Right. <laughs> exactly. And you can continue, and if you once you get better again, do the all the steps again, and you could go to both feet out, which is quite a bit more aggressive. Wow. Um, Th with that, you can add some flutter kicks in. Sure. We're trying to introduce some movement while you're doing this as that is when you're on a daily life. Gotcha. Okay. So that's all I'm going to show today, Bob. What's the third exercise? I thought there was a third exercise. A static crunch? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Bob. As I'm actually doing it because when you're up like this, I'm looking sure. here. And you do, then you can do the same exercise. And you can do the variations here. Or oh, just so by that, that's what you mean by static crunch. Right. You're actually just lifting the head. Right. Not you're, curling too much, but just kind of moving it straight up right. as much as so possible. So you work yeah. the muscles a little bit harder. Sure. Ooh, I can feel my six-pack, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to verify whether there's six there or not. Right. There might be only three. Okay. Or two. And actually, um, and you do that. There, There's more advanced exercises as far as doing this while you're standing. Uh, so that when you're moving around. So you carry it over from supine to stand. Right, to everyday life. Sure, gotcha. But we're just going to take it that far today. So uh, very good. Uh, I think that it's, uh, oh, by the way, if you're having problems with it, if there is the pain, you know, you need, you may have to go to a physical therapist. Right. If you're really having problems with the with the feedback and getting things to close up, where yeah. it should be. So very good. Good All luck right. with your thing, with uh, the exercises. and uh, Thanks for watching.